Next up, for the past eight months, 34 of the top legal minds in this country, left, right, center, at the call of the president, have been doing a deep dive analysis of the Supreme Court. Their goal? To examine a slew of proposed reforms, including increasing the number of justices on the high court and imposing term limits. The commission was a response to pressure by Democrats after years of political manipulation in the Senate that stopped one Obama nomination without even a hearing, but confirmed three from Donald Trump, resulting in what's likely to be a fairly long-term ideological tilt. So after eight months, as I said, six public meetings, 44 witnesses, the commission submitted its report, and while it offered arguments for and against the proposed reforms, it stopped short of any specific recommendations to the frustration of many. As the executive director of a group called Fix the Court put it, the Presidential Commission on the Supreme Court has finished its work, and without satisfying a single constituency across this wide country of ours, that in and of itself is quite a feat. Joining me to defend the commission, I think at least, are two of its members. Nancy Gertner, retired federal judge and senior lecturer at Harvard Law School. Tara Grove is an endowed chairholder in law at the University of Alabama School of Law. Professor, it's good to meet you. Judge, thanks so much for being here. Good to be here. Tara Thank Grove, can much. I start with you? Are you, no recommendations unanimously, is, are you comfortable with that? I think that is one consistent with the president's executive order. The president wanted an analysis, not a series of recommendations. And two, I think that was what this commission was capable of doing. It's a bipartisan commission, um, and there was a lot of disagreement, um, not only on a, on a partisan basis, but on a lot of other bases too, about the proper scope mm -hmm. of reform. And my hope is that we've done a lot to inform the debate. One of the things I, I wanna say, I have been studying court reform for well over a decade, and I have looked at congressional debates. I have looked at congressional reports. I have looked at executive branch materials uh, really since 1789 to the present. And there has never been anything like this before where a series of different types of reforms were proposed and studied and analysis offered. So let's dig in, if we can, Judge Gertner, for a second. You wrote a piece in the Washington Post with Larry Tribe saying you were uh, you moved from leaning yes on term limits and no on court expansion at the beginning of the process to no on term limits and yes on expansion. So can we start on term limits? What caused your uh, conversion from uh, a possible yes to a likely no? One of the things that we were dealing with as a commission is how extraordinarily powerful this Supreme Court is. Uh, uh, you know, long, long uh, service, long tenure, a constitution that is extraordinarily difficult to amend. So term limits, while I agree with them in principle, will be extremely difficult to accomplish. And frankly, it was that practical, uh, that, that was a, it was a practical issue more than anything else. We are, we stand alone I think this is right, Tara, is the only country in the Western world in which there are no, either a fixed term for the Supreme Court or retirement age. So it ought to be done, but the cumbersomeness of the doing of it was what made me back off. You know, before I get your thoughts, Professor, on this, let, let's get the thoughts a few years ago when Justice Breyer joined me and we discussed this very issue. I would say there should be a long tenure. Whether it's a term of years or not, Maybe it would be better to have a term of years, but it must be long because you don't want a person in that job thinking about his next job. So, Professor, that's what Justice Breyer thought a few years ago. What do you think about the concept of term limits? I have mixed emotions about the concept of term limits. I think um, there are real problems in a system that allows judges to serve for 40 or 50 years. But I think it's also very difficult to start with a system like that and try to transition to a system of limited but still very long terms, like 18 years. I agree with Judge Gertner uh, that, that it likely has to be done by constitutional amendment, and that's hard to do. But then when you design, design the constitutional amendment, that's equally hard. Um, does it apply to the current judges, or do we let them serve out their terms? If you do let the current judges serve out their terms, which is, I think, uh, what a lot of people want to do, we're talking about a term limit situation that can't actually be put into place for another 50 or 60 years. And so I think putting it into place is extraordinarily complicated. 
It doesn't mean we can't do it. I think we also have to think about whether we only want term limits for the Supreme Court or if we want term limits for the yeah. entire federal judiciary. And those are some difficult questions as well. Well, sir, is it fair to say you both think they're probably a good idea, but not practically obtainable? Is that not where you both are? I think that's correct, yes? Well, that, that's where that's where I am. That's where I am. Um, but I but I think that the, it's the issue of implementation Understood. that that, that Power is talking about, with which I agree. So, but Judge Gertner, if implementation and uh, uh, reality mm -hmm. of something being achieved is the criterion for your judgments here, how can you support expansion of the court? Talk about a heavy lift, and I think I'm being euphemistic, that's the heaviest of lifts, is it not? What's the, why are you persuaded that's the right way to go? Because it can be done by legislation, because it doesn't require a constitutional amendment. And because in the final analysis, I, I agree with Tara that the report was really masterful and that it was really, really, really important to have this discussion in a, a dispassionate setting and not uh, through op-eds or Twitter, you know, or on television. Having had that discussion, I did not think it was it was right to end up with, gee, it's really complicated. There are lots of, of, of problems, nothing we can do about it. So tell and me, Judge Gardner, on the merits, I'm sorry to interrupt you, on the merits, why is court expansion the right idea? Not procedurally, because of statutory change no, because, versus constitutional. Because because we Sorry. could add, for example, uh, we could add, for example, two more seats on the court. Um, yes, it will be the subject of rather, you know, rancorous debates uh, in Congress. No, no question about it. And and yes, you could put two more people on who would be wind up, you know, sort of aligning themselves with the people already on the court. But at least there's an opportunity for change on the court in two years, three years, whatever. Um, uh, the, the, the point that Larry Tribe and I were making was that this court, for a variety of reasons, is entrenched in a way that no other Supreme Court has ever been entrenched. And it's that breaking that logjam that we're concerned about. One last thing for you, Judge Gardner. If, if, if Hillary Clinton had become president and had <laughs> picked a late 40-year-old justice and two young 50-year-old justices, they would have been entrenched as well. Would you still be supporting expansion? I think I still would have been supporting expansion. I know that that's a hard, no one will believe that, Jim, but but here's why. I mean, it's really, I mean, it, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm naive. It is clear that the failure to hold a hearing on Merrick Garland, would Hillary have done that in comparable circumstance? Failure to hold a hearing on Merrick Garland. Holding a hearing on Barrett when people had already begun to 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 uh, uh, to vote makes it clear how manipulable the system is, and we have to do something about that. Understood. Uh, By the way, Garland was 237 days before election day nominated. Uh, Coney Barrett was right. 38 days. If people care, Professor, how about expansion of the court? I think it's all it's not going to happen, um, and I also think it's a very bad idea. Why? Um, so I totally understand the short-term instincts uh, to do something in response to the tactics of, um, of the Senate with respect to Merrick Garland, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Justice, Justice Barrett as well. But I think we have to think in the long term and in terms of the risks to judicial legitimacy um, and judicial independence and realize that if political forces today try to pack the Supreme Court. We could see political forces of tomorrow trying to do it. And there are some serious anti-democratic tendencies in our country that I think are deeply dangerous. One of the things that the current Supreme Court was still willing to do was to re reject the challenges to the 2020 presidential election. Now, to lawyers like Judge Gertner and myself, that's not terribly impressive because the legal challenges to the 2020 presidential election were not good legal challenges. But the reason we could assume that the Supreme Court would reject those challenges is we still had justices who believed in law. And my worry is that if we open up the door to court expansion, we're gonna see, we're gonna see a very different type of judge being nominated, not only to the US Supreme Court, but potentially to other courts as well. I also wanna point out in 1937, when President Franklin Roosevelt proposed packing the Supreme Court with up to six members, potentially making a 15-member Supreme Court, President Roosevelt faced a national crisis. This was the Great Depression, and it was not just a national economic crisis, 
It was a constitutional crisis to Roosevelt. Roosevelt believed the federal government not only had the power, but had the responsibility to help people in a, their deep time of need in the Great Depression. And he had over 70% control by the Democrats of both the House of Representatives and the Senate. If there was ever a time when the nation was in a deep crisis, one would think it would have been the 1930s. But if I may, and yet, if I may interrupt you just for a second, mm -hmm. it, but you used the term court packing a minute ago and why you think it's not a good idea. Would you not describe what Mitch McConnell and the Republicans did as court packing? So technically, no, to the extent court packing is deemed a legislative change in Understood. the number of available seats. I, I completely understand the, um, the, the characterization of it as court packing. I want to be clear. I think the rejection of Merrick Garland in 2016 was disgraceful. And I think it set off, uh, it was probably one of the most dangerous things that has happened to judicial independence in recent years. And I think that one cannot... Um, cannot say that Mitch McConnell is somehow absolved of responsibility Understood. for any of the court reform movements that have happened recently. If, I, if mm -hmm. I may, I only have 45 seconds left, literally quickly, though. I want to put up a poll, and I know you know this. Uh, support for the Supreme Court approval for the court is dropping like a rock. Very quickly, starting with you, Judge Gertner, something has to be done to respond to that lack of trust, does it not? Quickly? Well, that's what I'm responding to. It, it's, it's partly that. It's also, this is a court that does not have to deal with ideas or opinions other than their own. I think actually this is that court that Tara was worried about. They don't, they're talking to each other and not anybody else. Tara Grove, you have 30 seconds, literally. Uh, uh, doesn't that, those kind of numbers, don't those kind of numbers merit some response? I do not believe that expanding the Supreme Court will improve the legitimacy or the public reputation of the court. I think that it could actually cause it to go way down. Tara Grove, Nancy Gertner, really appreciate your service on that commission and your time here tonight. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you.